it's the end of time and the Mississippi River she's a gold dry. Hey guys, JC Smith here. Today I'm working on the Dodge. This is my 2011 Dodge 3500. It's a 6.7 Cummins crew cab, full wheel drive diesel, um, dually. I bought this thing a while ago and I really wanted to take it to the Mid-America Trucking Show but uh, it needed ball joints and it had a wheel bearing that was making some noise so I didn't want to take it so today I'm going to start taking it apart so uh, let's get at it. Alright so if you guys watched the axle swap that I did on Brandon's truck I swapped out two front axles took one out of one truck one out of another put one back in the other truck the other back in the other and I did the rear suspension blocks on both trucks put all the wheels and tires on did all that job I'm still on my original charge on this gun now I've already taken the other side apart using this gun haven't charged it yet and I'm about to do this I want to see how far I get in this job without having to change this but you know here get a look at it I use it on one job you know this is this is what it's starting to look like so I got to get them boots Matthew said he found them he sent me a link to them um, I forgot about it I need to get that ordered pretty quick because this thing's going to look like crap pretty soon. So, anyways, let's get to work. Alright, first step for me is to take this adapter off. See these nuts back here to hold this on. It's 22 millimeter. The way this is set up, put your nut on there, run your extension through that hole, and then you can break them all loose. Now, you, obviously, you got to take this off, the socket off, before you go too far or you'll be jammed in there and you can't get it out. Once you take this off, you can take the caliper off, then next, and then this rotor comes off. The rotor is sandwiched between the hub and the bearing, and this is what's holding it on. So let's get to that. Okay, I got the adapter off. Next I took the ABS wire loose. Um, it's uh, sitting inside the brake hose here. Just pull them out, and then they go up into this connector right here. Here and show you. You need to pull this little red tab back here. Pull that back before you push in on that. It's like a second lock. So take that out. And these are 24 millimeter to the caliper bolts. I got both of them out. Now what I do next is I'm fortunate enough to have these big 8 by 12 blocks. So I'll take the caliper off. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Probably not. I want to take it off and set it on the block here. So let me get that done. Okay, so I set it on here, and as you can see on the hose, it's not strained at all. I usually tie these up, but if I find a way that I can lay them on something, it seems to work better. Now I'm going to take this rotor off. Thankfully, it's loose. The other side was pretty stuck. I'll put this inside. Put it with that side of the, the truck so they don't get mixed up. Now I need to take this cotter pin out, and then this I believe is what is this 30 inch and a, inch and a 16th is what this one is. So let's get the cotter pin out. You know this this wheel bearing on this side wasn't horrible. If I'm going this far to do ball joints, there's no sense in not doing this wheel bearing too. Okay. Alright, cover your ears. Take my washer off. Now I'm ready to take the hub off. The hub, the wheel bearing hub assembly, see if I can get this, right in here and here, and there's two more in the front. They're, I believe they're 18 millimeter bolts. I'll take those, those bolts out. You can see how they come through here. I'll spray them a little bit so they don't come out dry. So when I go to reuse them, Hopefully the threads will be okay. I go through a lot of blaster, as you can imagine, in our rusty part of the world. Okay, let me get on that. Okay. 
I got all the bolts out now, and I've got the wire completely disconnected. Now, normally, I'd be very careful with this bearing. Now, I'm going to replace this bearing. Let's see if you can hear the noise. You really can't hear it. It's more pronounced with a wheel on it. Anyways, so I'm going to take a hammer, and I'm going to tap the back side of this bearing on either side to break it loose. If you're going to reuse it, you certainly don't want to do that. But this is going to be a little tough to get out of here. It's pretty rusty. Let's we'll see how it goes. Okay, it's out. Now I need to get the axle out. I usually just take a pry bar back in here. In between the axle and the joint, give it a little pop. And out she comes. All right, so you saw the axles out. Next, I need to work on the nuts that hold the ball joints in. There's one there and one on the bottom. And I like to be able to spin this knuckle freely. So I'm gonna take the tie rod loose. This happens to be a 21 millimeter. Gun had to work a little bit on that nine lock. All right, next to get this loose, I'm just going to take my little hammer, the little hammer, and I'm going to smack this right there. And when I hit that, this will fall out. Now, a lot of times, what I'll do is I'll leave that nut on, just a, a few threads, just to hold it from dropping. I don't want to screw my jack all up, so I'll smack that. See how it goes. Okay, this is a 15 16 nut to what the wrench I used. And the bottom, jeez, I remember what the bottom was. And then a couple well placed tappy taparoos right here and right here. And you can see it's ready to come out. I leave the bottom nut on so when I tap it, it'll fall, but not fall to the ground and screw up the dust shield and all that. So let's get it out. We'll get these uh, ball joints pressed out. This is my OTC ball joint press. Before I use it, I take some of this uh, grease here and I'll put it on the threads of the arbor so that when I'm using it, the threads aren't going dry into this piece of cast. So that's what I do. I don't know if you want to or use oil or something, but I just don't like to have them threads dry. So let me get it lubed up. We'll get set up and I'll show you a couple things. Okay. This came out pretty nice, pretty easy. Um, pressed out from the top. So let me get this out here. You see my grease kind of piled up there, which I'm plenty okay with. Hold it off there, and one successful ball joint pressed out. So, um, pretty simple, not too difficult. I just use this long handled ratchet. I don't use an impact on that unless, uh, it's really stubborn, I can't get it, but usually I can take that long bar, put it in here. While I'm doing it, I'll crank a little bit, tap on this, crank a little bit, tap, and that kind of helps it break loose. Now the bottom one. This one came out from the top. It pressed out this way. This one has to go out the bottom, so you got to take out this snap ring here. So we'll get that out. I'll probably try and smack it a few times with a hammer to try and break it loose before I use the... Uh, the press so uh, that's what I'm gonna do next all right so I smacked it a couple times with a hammer didn't do anything may have broke it loose a little bit I'm gonna spray a little blaster in here and I'll run the, the press and see what happens all right so again some put some tension on this put on my press and I smacked it right here twice with the uh, little hammer and it just popped I mean, that saves a lot of wear and tear on a body, on equipment, and then I can usually just run it, run a little more tension until I can't get, don't want to go to any, any farther. Then I'll take a hammer and then usually I can hit it again, but I'm one handed, so um, let me get this out of here. Okay, so it's all part. Again, all I did was put tension on that, and I smacked just a couple times here, and I put a little more tension, smack it again, 
you'd be surprised how much easier that is to do rather than just trying to force it. So now we got to get this axle joint out. It's not bad. It actually feels really good, but I'm not going to go this far and not do that. You know what I mean? So I went ahead and ordered up new ones. We'll get them out next. Okay, guys, I'm getting ready to go back together, but I wanted to show this this uh, point here. I'm working on the axle joints. Right in here, where the this has inside clips. So every time I do one of these, I take a flat file, and I go across this, and I just real lightly, you know, just make sure you're flat, just enough to get the rust off, you know, just enough to clean it. And I do it on all the surfaces. That's hard to see there, isn't it? Anyways, I do it on all the surfaces where the clips go. That way when I put it back together, I know it's sitting in there flat and I don't have to fight the U-joint to go in here. I didn't show you taking it apart because I'm sure so many guys out there, you know, U-joints are nothing new. So I'm going to get this one back in. I got the other one already ready to go. We're going to do this, then I'll get on the ball joints. Okay, it's all back in. And what I like to do once they're in is I will take a small chisel and tap on those snap rings all the way around make sure they're seated on all four and make sure it looks the same on all my caps protruding through here you know so they look the same and then also I want to make sure that it moves around real easy if you feel any binding it's possible that a needle bearing has fallen and gotten crosswise in between what would be this part let's see if I can do this it would be basically like a needle bearing can get crossways right in here and if it does it makes it really tight so then it can't it can't spin real well you'll feel it you actually feel it rolling in there you'll feel this little needle bearing in there and then you got to take it all back apart don't let it go because more than likely if you've got inside snap rings or outside snap rings either one if you got a needle bearing in there, you'll fight trying to get that the two snap rings in, and you might get it in, but your U joint won't last very long. But you want to make sure it moves around real freely. Um, I usually grease these after I put them in the truck, just because I'm going to grease the whole truck anyways. That way I don't forget and I get everything at the same time. So that's both the axle joints done. Here we go. So here's both axles ready to go now. And now we're going to get on to pressing in the ball joints. So we'll start out here. It's getting kind of late in the day. I don't know if I'll get both sides done. I'm going to try. We'll see what happens. The interest is up and the stock market's down. And you're only getting mugged if you go downtown. I live back in the woods, you see. Woman and the kids and the dogs and me.